Good evening. It is I, Rankar. It is my pleasure to be with you in this evening. I would like to continue, if, if I may, upon the theme which is beset for this evening about creating your own happiness or unhappiness. You know that is one of the tenets of the, or the beliefs that the medium embraces within the church that she attends that you create your own happiness or unhappiness. And as they say it, as you obey or disobey the laws of nature. But it really does not matter how much you obey or disobey the laws of nature. Although if you do disobey the laws of nature and you try to do things that are against the laws of nature, you will probably bring great harm to yourself because you cannot fly like a bird you cannot jump from great heights unless you have a parachute. You cannot do things that defy gravity or other laws of nature. So you will certainly create unhappiness for yourself if you try to fly like a bird and, and jump off the roof of your house or a cliff or something like that, that you are likely to uh, experience disastrous results from such a thing. And it is important for you to remember in your life that um, there is, uh, that it is important to not try to stress out the laws of nature. Sometimes people follow too closely in their cars, not remembering that there are things such as reaction times and break times. And if something happens in the traffic in front of you, you may not have sufficient space to react properly to avoid an accident. That is causing trouble for yourself because you are, in a sense, disobeying the laws of nature. And there are other laws of nature, uh, such as going too fast in your automobiles, to try to go around corners or navigate things, to try to um, drive recklessly without regard for traffic laws, the safety of others, or the safety of yourself. These things are disobeying the laws of nature. And of course, there is the disobedience of the laws of your land. Um, the things that the government has decided are the actions that you must take or you must not take. In general, they were originally designed to bring about the good of the whole rather than an individual good. It was to seek the good of the whole and what's good for everyone. And so obeying traffic laws is one of those things that allows you to take care of others as well as yourself. Because if everyone obeys the traffic laws, there will be less accidents. Some accidents are sure to happen simply because you are human and you occasionally make mistakes or there are lapses of attention um, to what you are doing. And as a result, accidents can happen. But let us talk about how to make yourself happy rather than how to co not cause accidents. Of course, not causing accidents and not causing problems for yourself is a great benefit to your being happy. It helps you a great deal. So that <clears throat> it is up to you to um, determine what is in your best interest. In general, in your own best interest means that you eat healthy, that you um, have a very diet, and um, you do not overeat, you eat enough to keep you happy and healthy, to feel full and satisfied, but not so much that you burden yourself with undue fat and things which uh, then cause you difficulties in your physical body. So it is always good to enjoy food and to deliberately seek to eat well-balanced meals. That is just one way to help yourself stay happier because when you are well, when you feel well, you can be happy. When your stomach is upset or your head, head hurts 
or other things are going on in your body which cause discomfort, then uh, you will not be happy. It will be much harder to feel happy if you have done something to break your leg, even if it was an accident, to have it immobilized in a cast so that it heals is not comfortable. You may not be in pain, but it is annoying, I am certain, with your physical bodies to have to um, deal with the, the healing of those physical bodies. And you will want to be healthy because when you are healthy, it is much easier to enjoy your life. So it's good for you to eat well. It's good for you to obey the laws of nature because all these things in the long run will make it easier for you to be happy. But the most important part of being happy is to watch your judgments. Because when you make judgments that this should not be, that someone is wrong, that they are doing something wrong, or you do not like what they are doing, or they are saying, those kind of judgments cause you unhappiness. If you happen to judge that this person is extremely funny, that they are fun to be around, that they are a good person, now that judgment causes you happiness. It's as simple as that. What are you judging today and how are you thinking? If you can avoid making judgments, you avoid making yourself unhappy. You can always think something like, I would prefer this is not happening. I don't particularly like the way this person is speaking. But if you can leave it as that simple uh, opinion or statement, that is much easier for you to deal with within your own consciousness. As soon as you say that, I am unhappy. This makes me mad. This person should not. I am annoyed. You are immediately causing yourself unhappiness. It's as simple as that. Think about what you are thinking for the most of the day. Now, if you are focused on solving problems and making progress, many times there is no need for you to judge anything except for the moment. Is it working? Am I achieving that which I wish to achieve? Is this coming out the right way? Because you need not get emotionally involved with these things. It is only when you uh, have impatience with yourself over the progress you are making, that you begin to get angry with yourself and with that progress. For anger is a defensive way of not feeling hurt or not feeling pain. It is an aggression back, which seeks to push away that which is bothering you. If you look at it in that way, why am I angry? It's because I don't want to experience what I am experiencing. I don't want to think about what I am thinking. So therefore I get angry and maybe the situation will change. At least you will respond by going away perhaps. Of course, you may get angry back. And then what is going to happen? Just more anger? It serves you so little to become angry with something. It is better to find solutions. It is better to work at bringing out harmony and happiness in your own life to see what is good, what is working. And it is to say that this is not working. You can always avoid saying this is not working by simply thinking this is not working right now. There is another or better solution that I can find. And by me following up your negative statement with an affirmation as to how things will end up, you are following with that positive statement, which gives you, um, remits the anger or the frustration or whatever you have created before that. For remember, all those feelings are what you create what you feel, 
Well, how you are reacting to a situation, it is strictly you. It is all you. And since you are the creator of the world in which you live, because you perceive things in the way that you perceive them, you make judgments, and these judgments constantly affect the way that you feel, affect your happiness and your joy, or you bring you sorrow or unhappiness. These are everything that uh, you create for yourself. In creating happiness, remember to think about your own self-fulfillment. In every day, you fill your day with many actions. If you judge your actions to be productive, if you judge that what you are doing gives you pleasure or brings you happiness or makes you feel good over what you have done because you have helped or aided someone else, or you have completed a product project, you have done something, you are creating fulfillment for yourself. Finding yourself a job in which you can experience fulfillment is sometimes a very difficult chore for you, but this should always be your aim, to find fulfillment in your work. And part of what finding fulfillment consists of is making the approved statements in your own mind about what you are doing. So you give yourself the approval. You say, I have helped someone today. I have whatever it happens to be. Maybe you translated something into a different language. You gave someone directions. You facilitated someone doing something else. You kept law and order. You kept your filing cabinets neat and tidy. You did the laundry so that people in your house have clean clothing. These are things which you can decide is fulfilling to yourself. In spite of the fact some of this may be petty and uninteresting. But if you feel that what you have done is a service to others, and by doing this service, you will decide to take happiness in your service, so it is that you create self-fulfillment. Self-fulfillment is very important in your life. You need to know and feel that you are doing good, that you are doing important things. And so it is important for you to prioritize the things that you do and label them as important. It does not matter if you are simply uh, cleaning up the streets, you are getting rid of the garbage, you are enhancing everyone's neighborhood or where they live because you are making things look clean and feel better. And everyone enjoys living in a clean neighborhood. So if you happen to be a street cleaner, so it is that you are enhancing everyone else's life. Even if people do not know it, if you take pride in what you do, knowing that you have been successful, that what you do ultimately helps others, whether it is simply your boss or someone else, and you are helping only that one person, but to know that you have helped and you have served others is a great benefit to yourself. It allows you to feel happy and complete in your life. For serving others is truly a part of what you have come here to do. It is the way in which the world works best. For as we all do service for others, so it is that uh, we are also served by those others. And so you give service and you receive service. And if you see that everyone is doing their part to make the world a happy, healthy, productive world in which there is peace and harmony, so that becomes your reality that there is peace and harmony, happiness, joy, prosperity in everything that you do and the world that you experience by simply seeing it, 
recognizing it, acknowledging it, and embracing it. Are there any questions you would like to ask of me, either on the subject or other subjects? I have a question, Ms. Tanya. Yes, hi, Tanya. It's amazing, Donna had mentioned, perhaps we think of our questions before we start, and I was inspired to do the set that just before we started. And fascinating, you were talking about breaking a leg and healing, and I work on a, a bone wing in the hospital. So I guess my question for Ron Carr is, um, the other day a package was delivered and it had titanium rods and I got to see exactly what gets put into the spine in surgery to help a person, um, you know, with their back. What's Ron Carr's position on um, or belief in uh, adding titanium and other objects to the body? Even cows, um, our parts are going into hearts these days. Uh, that's an animal, obviously, not a metal. But that's my question. Foreign things with surgically put, put into bodies? Well, if it is healing them and helping them, it is imminently great. It is wonderful. And why not use the technology that is available to yourself? There is nothing in nature that is um, forbidden, um, that is not good. Certainly, God gave you and other men and other women the intelligence to figure things out, to help yourself. So that when a leg is broken, as we had said, they put it in place and they keep it still so that it has the ability to heal back together. And perhaps at one time, they may not have had the sense to align the bones properly and people's legs would heal but it heal in ways that was not, um, eventually they would be able to walk on them, but perhaps they were now misshapen and misformed and it would make walking more difficult. And then by progression, someone realized that, well, if we straighten out the leg and make the ends fit together and let them heal that way, that person will continue to be able to walk effortlessly and easily. So is there anything wrong with that? Of course not. Now, there are times when the bones are so destroyed by the accident, they are in little pieces. How are you going to make that strong and keep them together? Well, it may be that that is when you use something that's made out of titanium or an artificial joint or something that we can take out what's there and put in something that works. It is so much easier and so much better for the patient uh, and the person who has been injured to have a leg rather than one that has been cut off because they have done so much damage to their foot and their ankle that they cannot walk on it. And it would never heal properly. And they would be in pain for a long time and perhaps for the rest of their life. So it is always good to use whatever can be used. There are, I know, that they use various parts of various animals that they have used. Um, also substances, um, hormones from uh, various animals um, until they figured out how to make artificial hormones that work just as well. Uh, and this is all good. This is done with God's science, God's brain that is present within each and every one of you, you all, when you align yourself to God and spirit in whatever way, to find a solution and find things to help others, this is when the gift of knowledge and understanding about how to help, what to do, can bring about great benefit to many people. And so these types of of the use of these types of things is beneficial and helpful. And so it is to be applauded and allowed. 
and even sometimes they take bones and bits and pieces of people who have died. Those people no longer needed those bodies. They went on into a higher life, life in spirit. And the bodies are just useless and wasted. But your scientists have figured out that sometimes if we salvage parts of people's bodies that have died, that these parts can still benefit others in other ways. And Oh, they sterilize them and they powder them and they polarize them and they create different things. But these things can all help someone else. And they do the same thing with the creation of vaccines. By injecting just a little bit of something into someone's body, not enough to make them very ill, but it sets their immune system in going. And so they are now enhanced and they can. Um, fend off many other microbes and things like that. The use of uh, drugs, penicillin, has all increased the lifespan and the well-being of others. And they are, uh, this is all good. And so that is what you must uh, think about when these things are being used and, and know that these are a blessing to all the people who need these help and need these, this help with their healing of their bodies. So it is all good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there other questions? Uh, yes, Ron Carr, it's Elizabeth. I was wondering if you could explain to me about the higher self and how we interact with it. Individuals have basically three different types of selves, so to speak. You know, there is the, the, your conscious mind. You all know what that is. That is the one that's busy thinking all day long and is observing things and thinking of solutions and that compels your body to move. They, this is your conscious mind. And there is the subconscious mind, which is like a big hard drive. It just takes and observes everything that the conscious mind observes. And this uh, hard drive, so to speak, the subconscious mind keeps everything within itself, which sometimes is good and sometimes can lead to varying difficulties for people in their life. For the subconscious mind judges nothing. It accepts everything and everything is true. But what it comes to know is from repetition. Those things that have been repeated that happen often are obviously more true to the subconscious mind than those things that only happen once in a while. The things that happen all the time are more important to be paid attention to. And so the subconscious mind can pick up many thoughts. Um, I'm using the word thoughts, but can form its own conclusions about what is good for you and your body. Now the subconscious mind is also what is kind of ruling when you go to sleep and you have your dreams. The images and the things that happen in your dreams are often the subconscious mind um, mulling over that which it has experienced during the day or the recent weeks, or that has been mostly on your mind that you have been thinking about. And certainly um, that is why uh, some messages which have been given to you on childhood concerning the person that you are can be extremely strong about knowing who you are. If you were always told you were a good person or a good girl and what you did was good, then you have good thoughts about your, your subconscious mind believes that you are good and knows that you are good. If you were constantly scolded and told that you were a bad girl, then it would know that you were a bad girl. And if that message of being a bad girl was followed up with you do not deserve things, the subconscious mind accepts that message and knows that you do not deserve good things in your life, that you shouldn't get rewards. And as a result, it may 
um, impel you in its own way to uh, be sloppy or lazy or not diligent and not work hard as other people to achieve things so that you don't get rewards. It wants to give you what you believe or what it believes is best for you. And it accepts the message that you are a bad girl and you don't deserve good things. And so good things may elude you. Oh, you will get some good things. But maybe so many times when you were on the edge of really achieving something, you may find that you become ill or you have an accident or something happens which seems to be outside of your control but is all part of your subconscious mind creating that which it knows to be true about yourself and your life. Now you have asked about the superconscious, that consciousness which is always connected to God um, is generally what we refer to by the superconscious. It is always attuned to the, um, I will call them the celestial realms, the, the, that, um, non-physical world, the spiritual world, um, where everything um, has originated in the past. And so when you, tr and where all knowledge resides, so the subconscious, the superconscious mind is the part of yourself always connected to the divine. We will just put it that way. It is connected to the divine. And as a result, when you want to go inside to know and understand something, when you want to find the highest truth of understanding and what is best for you and about yourself, is to move inside to find that oneness that you have with God, to know that there is no separation between yourself and God, that you are part of God. It is very simple, you know, for God has created everything. And everything is part of God. <clears throat> and then there is the issue of being part of God. You cannot be separated from him because he has created you. He has created all of us. And as we are part of his creation, the creator always loves and always is one with and always has part of himself invested in that which he has created. You can think of any creation that you yourself have made and it is an expression of your ideas and yourself. And so as God has created everything that is, so it is this reality in which you live and which I exist um, is part of God. For in order to manifest it into the physical, it had to be within his mind. It is his idea. And so we are all reflections of God's idea manifesting within his creation. Every detail of his creation remains part of him and is connected to him. So when we move in to ourselves, our God selves, our super consciousness, we are actually traveling that pathway to God's mind and to God's understanding and to God's knowledge. So although when you're in the physical world, you can only see and know those things that are in the physical world through your physical senses. You can come to understand at some level that which exists in the spirit world, that which exists outside of time instead of inside of time, and to know that there is a reality there and that you are you can access any in information that you need. You can come to understand anything that you need to understand by simply connecting up with that part of yourself, which is your super consciousness. 
Now, your superconsciousness does not feed directly into your conscious mind. There is no communication there. So it is not a direct communication, but it comes to you through your subconscious mind. And it is, and in various ways, the knowledge and information and whatever it is you are seeking can come to you through the words of others. You will suddenly hear someone speaking and the topic will be just what you wanted to know or understand more fully. And you will find that you have gotten an answer to a question. It can come, as I said, through the words of others. It can suddenly wake up and you just understand it. Now, you can't suddenly wake up and play the piano because the information in your mind, the musical ideas, the things that you hear, the things that you want to express have not been trained to come out of your fingers when you play the piano or when you pick up another instrument. So they cannot be expressed that way uh, immediately, but you could always learn to play the piano or the instrument and then be able to express that which you have learned. For that is true in many ways. The things that you understand can't always be um, manifested in the physical because the understanding is internal within yourself. And this is where you can grow and get all the information that you want, uh, the understandings that you desire. And these all come from the sub superconscious mind, which transmits its information to the subconscious mind, which transmits its information to the conscious mind. It is kind of a roundabout way that you come to knowledge. So very often you wake up and you suddenly know what it is you were seeking to understand. It seems to all make sense. Or you hear someone else speaking about it and that makes all, well, that makes the sense that you need to bring you the understanding that you need. Or some other thing happens to enlighten you. And so that is how the superconscious works. You may think of it as um, perhaps a string, a simple connection that you have to God or to spirit, however you wish to think of it. And uh, that God or spirit has all the knowledge and understanding that you want. You truly have it within you. And your superconsciousness is the repository of all the knowledge that you need, but it is also your connection to spirit where there is all the knowledge that you need. So any way you wish to look at it, your superconsciousness is your pathway to understanding. And in many ways that could make it your pathway to great happiness. I hope I've made some sense here to you and that it has been helpful. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. You. Are there other questions? Uh, yes, you were saying that the superconscious affects the subconscious. Okay, but then you also said that the subconscious is where we store all our garbage. <laughs> all your stuff. Oh, yeah, all, all your, your stuff memories. You Everything that ever happened to you is stuck in your subconscious. Okay, so how, how can the can your superconscious affect the subconscious knowing that the things that you've got in the subconscious are screwing you up? <laughs> it does not affect your subconscious. It communicates the information to your subconscious mind who then can bring it into your conscious mind if it is something you have been seeking and knowing. Your, super, your subconscious mind would know the information that you are seeking. He knows your question. It knows your answer because it is aware of everything that you are thinking as well as what you are experiencing. The subconscious is, as I have said, it is just uh, like a big hard drive or a well that is filled with water. And the water is every thought, every word that you have heard, everything that you have experienced in your 
um, life is sits there in this holder called your subconscious mind. Um, your superconscious gets you the information that you are seeking, it gives you the guidance that you desire, but it communicates it to the subconscious mind, who is aware that this should be communicated to you. And therefore, it makes that knowledge available to you in the dream state, in a relaxed hypnotic state. It can, as I, as I have said, it can make you aware of will bring you into the presence of someone who will give the answer. It, it, it is a subconscious mind it is, is very subtle, but very strong. It is hard to explain. Um, so it is the superconscious of the mind communicates to the subconscious what it is you need to know, which then passes it on to you in many different ways, symbolically, in the words of others in your dreams, in your thoughts, you will suddenly just come to know these things. It is just part of the passage by which the super consciousness can make you aware of things that you need to know. Right, so if your subconscious says I'm a bad girl and you don't want to be a bad girl, so you could reach to the higher self and there, and it's going to give you what <laughs> to, well, to yeah. information what i mean <laughs> you know you have to you can train your you can take care of your own subconscious mind by simply using affirmations so if you have been given that subconscious um, message from childhood that you are a bad girl and you want to change that you simply begin to employ affirmations so that you say, I am a good girl. I do everything that I can to be good. I am happy, I am healthy, I am good. I am good in every way. I do everything right. By acknowledging when you do something right, um, by simply pointing it out to yourself and saying that, I have made this a large donation to the church. I am a good girl. I have given, uh, given away uh, these, this present to this person. I am a great and wonderful and thoughtful person. By saying those things about yourself, the subconscious mind listens to what you are also thinking and saying. So by using affirmations, you can re-educate your subconscious mind to know you in a different way. I am prosperous because I see I have many good things in my life. While the, your subconscious mind might have held the thought that you were poor because at one time in your life you didn't have much money and you were constantly thinking, I don't have enough money for this. I don't have enough money for that. I don't have the money to do this. I, am, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. You keep telling yourself, I don't have enough. And you have gotten a poverty consciousness. Now you have to change that. And you have to change that by saying, I have more than enough. I have everything I need. I am happy in every way. I have enough clothes to wear. I have enough food to eat. I have shelter over my head. I have more than enough of everything that I need. I have 10 cents left over at the end of the week. I am wealthy. I have plenty of extra money. And by saying those things, the subconscious mind accepts those messages also. So no matter how you have been programmed from when you were little, and we will say that you have, we have, everyone on the physical plane has been programmed in to a certain extent from the time they were very small children and began to hear the messages that their parents were saying about themselves, that you can reprogram yourself to know yourself to be totally different. And so you can think of yourself as being wonderful as being beautiful, whatever it is you wish to reprogram, as being successful. Every time you do something right, you can say what a successful person you are. Every time something good happens, you can say that you are very lucky and that you are lucky in everything that happens so that you win at lots of things. Um, so that you win at the lottery, you win at life, you win games whenever you play them, if that is what you want to shape your life to be about. 
So our conscious mind has to brainwash our subconscious mind. And that doesn't have anything to do with the superconscious. Right. Okay. <laughs> your conscious mind can brainwash your subconscious mind without any use of the superconscious. And your oh. superconscious would not try to brainwash you. It is merely your connection to God. It okay. is merely that which keeps you always attuned to the spirit world in some way, shape, or form. Most people um, don't choose to be aware of it. Um, and so they do not develop that awareness. But those who want to ask spirit the answer for things begin to hear and you get the answers from spirit. It becomes part of their training, so to speak. But they have done that because they chose to ask for the enlightenment and the guidance and the help from spirit. And they have addressed it as spirit. Now, someone else may not address it as spirit, but may say God, or may say Jesus, or may say Krishna. It does not matter what term is used because they are all the divine source, but you are seeking the guidance of a divine source. And um, you will begin to hear that guidance. That is the same thing as programming yourself to know that you are beautiful or that you are lucky or that you are prosperous or that you are happy and that you, are, that you help other people all the time and uh, that people recognize your value in the world. You see, many times you are all these things, but you don't feel that you get the recognition and that other people value you. And so sometimes you still feel poor and mean and you are not as happy. But by affirming the fact that people appreciate the things you go, you do, you will find that you will notice, you will hear that people appreciate the things that you do. Now, people may have been saying and expressing appreciation in the past, but if your belief was that you are not appreciated, you never heard those words of others. But if you change your belief to know that you are appreciated, you begin to hear those words of others and you begin to feel appreciated. You see, there are many things that you see, observe, hear, but you do not pay attention to because there is so many things going on around you in every day that you cannot pay attention to everything. And you pay attention to those things that are a reflection of your beliefs. And these things all reinforce your beliefs. So therefore, if it's outside of your belief, you do not notice it and you do not pay attention to it. So you are unaware of it. So you may be considered very beautiful, but never have heard anyone say that you are very beautiful because you didn't believe it anyway. So even if they were talking about it, you just ignored it. Your brain didn't register it. But now, if for some reason you've come to the understanding that you are a beautiful person, you may notice that people say, doesn't she look beautiful today? Or isn't she nice? Or isn't she terrific? I love what she is wearing. You'll hear the compliments that you didn't hear before. For that is the way it works with your perceptions. You notice those things which confirm your beliefs in yourself as well as other people. And you ignore those things which you do not believe because they cannot be true. And that is simply what your mind does, part of its judging capabilities. Your mind was built to judge and compare. Um, it is very important that you do this in the physical world so that you can function properly, so you can know when danger is present, so you can tell whether um, a charging animal is charging at you or charging at something else that is behind you or um, not in your direction. 
cards so that you can tell where there is enough room for you to pull out in front of that card that is coming to you when you were judging, when you are driving. You see that judging is very important for you in your everyday life. It is a valuable skill, but it is also self-defeating in many ways. So you have to train yourself to be aware of and to know the things that you want to know. And when you can make yourself aware that you want in your subconscious mind, that you want to hear these things, you want to know the truth of something, is when you will suddenly hear it. Because it is being spoken. It is being said. But you may not be hearing it because you will be hearing something else. If you think about any time in your day, there are many noises going on. And wherever you choose to focus your attention is what you will hear the loudest. So that if you're focusing on the words of the person in front of you, you will hear those words. And you may not hear the police siren. You will hear it, but it will be in the back of your mind and you won't pay attention to it. Um, you may not hear the brain falling down. Again, you will hear it, but you are not it's not important to you, so you don't hear it with awareness. It is only there in your consciousness. Uh -huh. You hear so much more than you are consciously aware of. It is the same thing with your sight. You are taking in so many things all at the same time. You cannot possibly think about all the things all at the same time. So you let go of many details that is, are in front of you and focus on that which you think is most important. And uh, as a result, you don't hear everything. You don't see everything. You only are paying attention to what your mind thinks is important. So we should practice changing our focus a little. <laughs> yes. You can make that affirmation that I want to focus on and you decide what you want to focus on. I want to hear words of love in my life. I don't want to hear words of hate or unhappiness. And you will tune out people who are speaking hatred and unhappy. You will focus on something else and be in a different place because you don't want to hear those things. Once you make it clear what you want, your subconscious mind actually can facilitate you. It takes some training, it takes some work, but your subconscious mind will listen to what you want to know when you tell it what you want and what you want to feel, what's important to you, and you will begin to notice the changes in your life. Nothing has changed, not particularly well, but the world you live in will be different because you are now paying attention to different things. Mm -hmm. right. you know? I had an experience one time uh, where I was by a river and uh, I was with a guy that did karate or Tai Chi or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, he says, do you hear the trickle in the, in the brook? And I'm like, no. <laughs> he says, stop, concentrate, think about it, listen. And eventually I heard the trickle and broke and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, that was like, wow. <laughs> Didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yes, you have to desire to, to hear certain things in particular, if you want to change your perception of the world. If you want, as I said, if you want to hear words of love, they need not be directed at you, but they can be directed at people giving people around themselves words of love. And you may just hear that, a word of love waiting in the line in the supermarket. It may be the lady behind you holding her baby who says, I love you. Okay. And, and it's directed at the baby, but it's, it's words of love. Now, you might never have noticed that, except that you decided you wanted to hear words of love. And you'll begin to notice that there are words of love around you. And you may then adopt a new perception that this world is a much more loving place than you thought. Oh, so good. 
it is that type of a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You might as well choose to hear things that make you feel good and happy. Mm -hmm. But it does require an affirmation of thought. This is what you want in your life. You want to hear words of love. I want to hear words of encouragement. I want to hear words of hope. It does not matter what you wish, wish to hear, but ask to hear those things so you don't have to listen to um, people that are being defensive or people that are being aggressive, aggressive or people who are being angry. There is no need to hear those things when there are lots of other things you can hear which are much more compatible or happier or can create a happy life for yourself. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there other questions? Rankar, when we are struggling on this side sometimes with guilt, are our loved ones that have moved on to the other side able to help us and comfort us in that grief? Now, there are a couple parts to your question that I'm not sure what you are asking. Um, if you are feeling guilt was, over anything and you are referring to loved ones, but you're not feeling particularly guilty about those loved ones, is that what we are talking no, about? No, I said when we're, when we're struggling with grief, Grief. Because of the loss of the people that are on the other side. Yes. Are those loved ones able to help and comfort us to get through those moments or days or hours or however? I know that grief is a process and it comes and it goes, but I wonder, do they comfort us and are they aware of how we feel? They are definitely aware of how you feel. Um, they may try to be a comfort, but when a person is in grief, um, they usually cannot um, overcome that grieving feeling with words of comfort from them. Um, it, it just does not seem to work. And because you are grieving, um, and in particular, if you feel guilty about something that you did about them, you make it even more difficult for them to um, communicate to you because of your emotionalism um, that is going on. It, it is not possible for them to give you words of comfort. When you are in the right mood, in other words, when you are open and you wish to feel or hear all words of love, um, you need to express those words, um, what you are feeling along that line. If you're in your grief, um, you can't be expressing your grief you have to express your love for that person that has gone on and has, has died. So, and has transitioned, or they are still alive. And you have to know that, and you have to send them your love. And it, that becomes the easier way for them to respond with, with, and have you open to receive their love for you. So it becomes a two-way street. Do you understand? When you are grieving, you are not sending the love. And it, you are not open to feeling the love. You are inside with your own pain. And so you are oblivious to the love. You can think of it, if you can, um, think of it any way that you wish, where you in the physical world are angry or you are hurt or any strong, um, I will use the phrase negative emotion that you are going through, unhappiness, hurt, fear. It is very hard for you when you are in that state 
to hear uh, and accept any words of comfort, even from someone who is standing next to you in the physical. They may say to you, it is okay. They are still alive. I know that they are alive, you know, that they are in spirit and healthy and strong. Those words may not reach you when you are in extreme grief. Um, if you are angry over the actions of someone and a person next to you says, they didn't mean it that way, you're misinterpreting things. Does that get you over your anger? Probably not. I mean, it may sink through and sink in, but it's hard when you are in the midst of a strong uh, emotion to hear words that will mitigate, mitigate that emotion. So when you're asking if people in spirit can send you love, they can, but can you receive it? Can you hear it? And the answer is probably not. You are not in the right open session. So probably when you're in the most grief, if you're feeling guilty over something or you're just grieving because you have lost this person that you love, you have lost them from your physical life, they are still with you. And they're with you in your mind, in your consciousness, um, in your memory. And you need to force yourself to think of some good things and loving things and remember good stuff so that you can lift your own consciousness to say, yes, I remember when we did this together or when this happened or when you said that, or I remember this wonderful thought. And then you will be more open and available to feel the love that they are sending to you. So like so many things on the physical plane, it is all up to you. Other people cannot do it. Other people cannot help you. Um, they can try. It is why you cannot help anyone else. They need to help themselves. They need to take the actions to make their lives better. It does not matter what you do. You can try to uh, encourage them. You can give them words of wisdom. But they need to do the work themselves in order to change and alter their lives. And so when a person is in grief, the most important thing they can do for themselves to help them over the grief is to remember the good things, the good times, the good thoughts, and to think loving thoughts to that person who is now on the other side. And then they will be able to feel more readily the love that returns to them. So that is the clue for feeling better in your everyday. Always think of the good stuff. Always think the good thoughts. Are there other questions? I hope it's been helpful to you. Runcar, this may be a question for uh, you when Norma is there, you can let me know. Sometimes you have your joy guide that comes through and you have, I think, Benjamin that does healing. Um, when we do these sessions, uh, is it appropriate or recommended to call upon them? If we ask things, how does that work with oh, your group? certainly. If you wish to ask things about health, you may call on, ask to speak to Dr. Benjamin. Um, while I am present, I will probably um, postpone that. Ask, ask uh, to, I, we will, I will make a wanna, well, wanna will hear your request. And uh, when I say good night, then she will bring in Dr. Benjamin. If you wanted to speak to Sister Constance, you could speak to Sister Constance, simply ask for her. Um, and the same thing, if you want to ask something for the joy guide, just remember that one sometimes does not like 
too, uh, be too serious. She prefers uh, not to be serious when you ask her questions, but she, she gets there sometimes. What, what type, I'm, I'm fairly new at understanding them, what type of things would want to discuss or we, you know what I mean? Um, hmm. What types of things would we ask her, um, subject well, matter? Sometimes, you know, she's a good one to ask if you want to speak to someone else or you want to check on someone who is in spirit. Juana is an excellent person to ask for that because she is the, the, the joy guide, the gatekeeper, and she can help you be in touch with some people who have um, already transitioned. Um, uh, Dr. Benjamin is the medical doctor for the medium, and uh, Dr. Benjamin can always help with um, physical or health questions. Um, he is not able to prescribe, obviously, because um, he cannot do that from spirit. Um, and it would be unlawful for the medium to do that. So, but he can give you suggestions. Um, if you wish. And um, Sister Constance um, helps in relationships. Uh, that may seem a bit strange to people that uh, a spirit who's, who identifies herself as a uh, nun, a religious person, um, helps with um, relationships, but she does. So you may ask her uh, those kind of questions with her. And she is good with many subjects about love and um, how to well, help someone else. But you see, helping someone else is always difficult. You really cannot help other people. All you can do is inspire them to help themselves um, through your own words and your suggestions, and you can encourage them and affirm that they have the ability to do things. And so that will help them to take the actions perhaps that they need to take to make their lives better. So you can speak to Sister Constance about that sort of thing. And sometimes she also handles business questions. May I ask uh, quickly to just contact Vincent who was part of our church vince do you know who i am speaking about i i do know who you are speaking about mm -hmm. yes okay and um but if you wish to to um make some contact that is a thing to ask juana so um i could say good night i'm not sure of, of the time at this point in time it is getting fairly on um i could say good night and then you could ask juana when she comes back and um, she will either, if he is able to facilitate the medium, she can allow that, but more likely she is likely to be um, an intermediary for your discussion with Vince. Okay, if nobody else has anything else, I don't wanna take away from the others. Yes, so I will simply ask, are there any more questions? And as no one is jumping in at this time, I will give you all my blessings. Good night. Good night. Hi, I'm back. Okay, I know there's a special request out there, so speak up. Tanya, uh, speak up. <laughs> I, I couldn't find my unmute button. <laughs> Vincent, who was part of the healing circle and a member of the church for many years, does he have any uh, thing, words of wisdom to impart to us, to help us, to heal us, anything that he might help us with our, you know, group here? That's all I have. Unless Donna has any questions of him. <laughs> okay. Do, do you have a question of Vincent also, Donna? No, I, I didn't. I just would like to say hi, though. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I do not know if he will be able to work the medium, so to speak, because remember, you have to learn how to work the medium. And he may not be up to that, but I can always get him. Hold on just a moment, please.
All right, I have him here, and um, he's delighted to to uh, be here with you um, uh, in this way. He's sorry, but um, we are we are not going to um, uh, we are not going to allow him to try and utilize the medium's body to say hello. And so, um, just know that he is here. Um, he says hello to all of uh, all of you. He did not know all of you. Um, uh, he has known some of you, um, and uh, he gives his sense his love to everyone here that he has known. And um, oh, and he says, of course, he loves everybody. So <laughs> he's he's correcting me there. He's sending even the people he did not personally meet that because he wishes everyone well from his position. And um, oh. Uh, so you should all know that he is he is very well. The transition was very quick for him, and it was easy for him. Um, and he does not re regret that he had to go. It was it was time. Um, he is also saying one moment. Um, He has been to the healing circle uh, from time to time when it was held in the sanctuary. And, um, but he did not really look in on things when it was just over the, over the internet. Um, that was not as easy for him to look into. It was not, he was not able to do that. But he sends everybody his love, and he says that everything we knew to be true is true, and that you should all um, oh, he is saying that you should look forward to your own transitions, not prematurely. He is not urging anyone to take any actions. He is just saying to know that it is. It is wonderful to return back to spirit that he loves you all and that, um, and if any of you happen to see Jean, um, he really wants to send her his love. And to, uh, if you see his Jean, would you please pass it on to her so that um, she knows that he is with her, but she knows that already because they have a good relationship in spirit, but he wants, for her to hear it coming from someone else. So if you should see Jean, please let her know that um, he, as always, still loves her. And I think that is it. Is there anything you want to ask him or say to him so that we could keep him here a minute so longer? Uh, I'm speechless myself. I, I don't unless someone else does. <laughs> Okay, well, he's good. And um, once again, <laughs> you know, he would say, I love you, doll. Okay. Yeah. All right, he's saying good night. Um, he has said good night. So now it's just Thanks. us back. And if there's nothing else, then is there anything else you anyone wants to ask me? You could ask about me, you know. Well, you don't have to do that tonight. Think about it another night. I'll be happy to tell you all about me. And um, well, remember, I love you all. Good night. Oh, we love you. Thank you. Good night.